Hello, today I want to show you how to install the firmware, the Marlin firmware for your ANET A8 uh, onto the RAMs. First of all, you have to download the Arduino ID. Just go on the Arduino site, click on Windows Installer, click on Just Download, and then install the program. The next thing you will need is the UAG lab if you are using a full graphics display. I will link you the site below. Just click on UAG lib there and it will download a zip file. And the last thing you will need is the Marlin firmware. Just go in the GitHub page, download zip file. Open the zip file and unzip it wherever you want to. I have already made this. There is the unzipped file. Navigate into Marlin RC, Marlin. Scroll down to Marlin.ino. Then it will open Arduino IDE. Go into your configuration.h. And then you have to edit the settings you want to have. So first of all, scroll down to there. You can here use an author and there you can define if it sh shows the boot screen or not. I don't like the boot screen that much. So, and I think it is a little bit faster booting up. Not quite sure if it really is, but I've deactivated this. The next thing you have to do is to either leave the board rate as it is or change it to 115,200. I left mine on 250,000. It worked out quite well with the RAMS board and I had no problems at all. If you have any connection errors, just change this value to this value here. Then there the RAMS board. You have to define your board. It's basically already defined for us. It's a RAMS board with an extruder, a fan and a bed. If you're using another board, just click on the arrow here and go into your boards.h. There are all boards listed, which are compatible with Marlin. Just choose out one of these, either copy the name of them or the number of them and paste them there, just there, instead of the RAM board. We have only one extruder, so this is also fine. That's okay. And then to our power supply, we are using a standard power supply, so we don't need to change this as well. And now to our thermistors. The ANET A8 uses the 100K thermistor here. So we have to change them for your hot end and for your heat bed. Just type in five and you are done. You won't need to change these values. This is only a safety feature. If it reads values below this, it will basically show that your, your thermistor is broken. There, I would recommend you to change the maximum temperature for your heat bed to 130 degrees and maybe even limiting the hot end temperatures because you have a PTFE inliner, so 230 degrees upwards, the inliner will break down more or less. Yeah, or you just go don't go that high even, so you can leave it as it is. Now to the PID settings. 
this are the temperature control settings for your hot end. I would recommend you just I would recommend you to just leave these settings as they are and then perform a PID auto tune after you've uploaded the fiber. Then you will get new KP, KI, KD values, then just replace them. For the bed, I would also recommend you to activate this. It's just a better way to control the temperatures. There the KI, KP and KD values were quite a bit off, so there you will have to definitely use PID Autotune. To calculate these values, then change them and paste them into there. It's quite easy, but it needs some time. So, thermal runaway, never ever deactivate this because it's a safety feature. If a thermistor falls out of the mounting hole or something like this, the printer will not heat up till it basically dies. We are only using min end stops, so that's also fine. We don't need end stop pull ups. Maybe if you are using a Zmin probe, sometimes you will need this. Then just uncomment this line. So just remove the two slashes there and it's uncommented. To the end stops you will have to change them to true because otherwise your printer will think that the end stop is triggered when it shouldn't be triggered. So yeah, just change this. As well as the probe you will have, it depends on the type of probe. So Then to your steps per millimeter, you will have to change them definitely because these are the wrong values. I will just change them to the Skynet values. 100 for your X and Y axis, 400 for your extruder and 95 for your uh, Z. 400 for your z-axis and 95 for your extruder. Um, here the maximum feed rate for your x, y and z-axis also from the scanner primer. Basically all the all the values are from the scanner primer because they worked out quite well so why not use them. Maximum acceleration also a bit lower because of the not so rigid construction. These values will you will definitely have to change. So 650, 1000 and 1000. The jerk I would also lower to 7. This is this is basically a setting for um, against ghosting. Um, this means add sharp edges. You will see the sharp edge even after the printed part, uh, after the edge in your printed part. So, for example, on your calibration cube, the X will be visible even to the left and right side of it. So, you will need to change this then. I have mine, I think, on 7 and it works quite well. Then, to the next part, if you are using an auto level sensor, you have to uncomment this line and also give an offset of your sensor. There you can either also use the scanet values if you are using a sensor that's mounted like the one in the scanet fiber or you are using the, f uh, the um, amount from Thingiverse and then they will also give you an offset for the amount from Thingiverse. You can raise the speed a bit, but I think the accuracy won't be that good anymore. So just leave it as it is. It's basically it, I think, for now. Then there, you will have to set a height where it goes after each probing. So it lowers probes, then it rises a bit and then goes to the next point. 
definitely leave these values as they are because they work fine. Don't lower them, them to, no, uh, to zero. It won't work then anymore. That's also fine. If you see that your X, Y or Z axis is going into the wrong direction, just invert these values. So from false to true, from true to false. Or just switch your stepper driver connectors around. Doesn't really matter which method you choose. So yeah, just be careful on your first boot up of your printer that the axis goes in the right direction. So be prepared to turn off your printer. Then the min software end stop. This is quite important if you are using an auto leveling sensor and you have to still calibrate your sensor. So over here you are using a Z offset, but you can't mount your probe that well. So you will have to manually align your sensor and set an offset there. Um, yeah, to go below zero, Z zero, you have to disable these software end stops. So just type in there false. The next important part is the travel limits after homing. This more or less defines where your heat bed is. So just use the values from Skynet. They work quite out and they work quite well. So just use these 220 minus 33, 220 minus 10, 240. <clears throat> then the auto bed leveling. I would recommend you to use the bilinear. And then you have to adjust your probing positions, which your printer can reach. So there I also use the Skynet values. So 15 to 10 to 5 and 48. Mm. Yeah, that's fine. If you want to enable the EEPROM, uncomment this line here, and you will have EEPROM settings. I don't use them at all, so, well, I've disabled it. Just change everything in Marlin. There you can also change your preheating temperatures, however you want to. And then for your LCD support, there you can define your language. For example, English, EN, and German, DE, Spanish, ES, and so on there. Everything is labeled over there. Just copy the this for example and paste it there. The next thing we have to do is to enable the SD support. If your display has a SD card, just uncomment this line. And yeah, that's it. The next thing to do is to mm, you can change there also the steps when you're rotating your knob and you can also change the directions clockwise counterclockwise so just as you change the direction it goes to left down and to right up sometimes it's annoying so change this reverse menu direction um Yeah, the next thing, most people who are buying the full kits or yeah, basically buying in RAM sport are using the RepRap discount displays. 
So if you have a 2004 display like this one, there it is. And commit this line here. If you are using a full graphics display, use this line here. The full graphics display is basically this. Yeah, and I think that's it as far as I know. Yeah. So if you are using a full graphics display, you will have to download the G8 library over there. Just download the zip file, install it by going to tools. Oh no, sketch, include library and then add zip library. After you've done this, the UAGLib will appear here. Just click on it. And it will include this library. So the next thing we have to do is to go to board and choose the Mega 2560. If you have any problems uploading it, use maybe the Mega 80K. This will also work. Choose there your processor, 2560. There your COM port. I would recommend you first looking at the COM port, then plugging it, uh, plugging in the RAM port, and then a new COM port will appear. Just choose that. Check your firmware and yeah, compile it more or less. This will need some time depending on your processor. And after that's done without any error messages, just click on upload it will, and it will upload it to your RAMS board. So that's basically it. If you have any questions, just comment below and I'll try to help you. Bye.